What is going on, YouTube world? We are KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all that cool stuff. I am your brother Reza, and Sister Cat is working the camera machine today, brothers and sisters, because my hands are already dirty. We're gonna do some maintenance. I'm gonna do an oil change on our 2005 GX. <laughs> 470 and then we're gonna make this video really quick because we got a meeting to go to so let's get started right now so as i said we have a meeting to get into so i'm gonna jump right into this job brothers and sisters first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get my car no suv truck i call it a truck i'm gonna get my truck up on these delightful little ramps over here in the corner i'm going to chop my rear wheel so the car doesn't roll off over me and then i'm going to remove the first skid plate so i can get to the uh oil filter because i was going to siphon the oil filter from the top of the engine through the uh check tube but on this car to even get to the oil filter you have to remove a skid plate so i might as well do everything while i'm under the car anyway so that is how we're going to tackle this job today my brothers and sisters and it should be fun and we're going to be doing this really quick because we got things to do. Yeah. Today's tools of the jobs, brothers and sisters, is number one, oil. We have oil right here. We have two, uh, I guess, five gallon. No, these are not five gallons. They're five quarts each jugs. This only takes 6.1 quarts, I believe. So we got plenty of oil. We actually have a, a oil filter right there. We got a Fram one. We got this from Walmart, really cheap. It was awesome, right off the shelf, boom. Uh, we have our different um, oil, uh, what is it? Oil filter removal tools. You know, you can use whichever flavor of oil removal tool you like, whether it be this or this type or the one with the chains and the whips. Depends on what you are into. Uh, we have a 12 millimeter socket. We have a 14 millimeter socket and we also have a 10 millimeter socket. These two will be used to remove the uh, skid plate, and this one right here will be used to remove the actual uh, drain plug. We have one extension. We might need a longer extension, but this represents extensions for today's video. We have the key to the car because gotta have the key. And then we have the jacks, uh, not jacks, what is this thing called? Ramps. ramps. <laughs> yes, we're gonna use these ramps. So let's go ahead and get started. So now we have our beloved GX470 up on ramps. I could have probably done this on the ground, but there's no point in me struggling and wiggling on the ground when I have ramps. So first thing I had to do is remove this um, skid plate. And uh, that's really simple. It used the, uh, I'm gonna use my sockets to get this off and it should come off quick, fast and in a hurry. So now you're gonna see a time lapse of me removing the skid plate. skid plate has been removed and now I can get to my oil filter which is right here and I have these little pieces of material that go between the uh, actual radiator and the skid plate I'm just gonna tuck them back to where they go and uh, hopefully they stay <laughs> and uh, yeah so now the next thing I'm gonna do is open up the uh, drain plug which is back here on the back of the uh, uh, oil pan not oil pan but yes the oil pan and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this so that's coming up now. I'm going to drain this oil out. Yay! Remember when I said I was going to use a different extension? I'm going to use this one because this is a little deep in here, but it's not that bad. You really don't need anything like this, but I like to have a little bit of extra room to party. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take this drain plug loose. So when you do this part right here, you really kind of can't help but get a little bit of oil on you. No matter how fast you do this, I've gotten myself to the point where Last time I did an oil change, I got a drop of oil this big on me. Let's see what I can do this time. <laughs> Let me position myself. <laughs> I don't want to get slapped in the face either. Let's see. Ugh. Okay, I can look through here. Let's see if I can do this and stay clean. You can also use gloves to do this. A lot of people do. But I'm old school. Hey, there it goes. See? Just a little drop of oil on me. Look at that. See? Barely a drop. You can't be done. <laughs> Alright, everybody. So the oil is draining out. And uh, if I can get my camera up in here. Nope, I can't. I was going to show y'all where the actual dragon plug location is. But since it's almost finished draining, I'm going to do this number right here. And uh, can you see it? Yep, you can see it. Now we have drained all the oil via the drain plug. Now we're going to go ahead and swap our filter out and put our new filter on and refill the system. And uh, this thing has this cool little feature right here. This little uh, ramp for the oil to actually like drain 
as it comes out of this uh, filter area so it doesn't just go everywhere it's gonna fall down this ramp and then it's gonna come into the um, uh, I don't know what to call this right now a vessel that carries dead oil <laughs> oil pan oil catch pan or whatever the stupid thing is called you about to see it happen verify the diameter of our filters and uh, yep they look like they're good and while I'm doing that I'm also transferring oil from that one to from that gasket to that gasket shaking that one off and now all I gotta do is twist this filter back on and um, fill the system back up so that's where the uh, you know what before I do that it's still dripping just a tad bit but I'm gonna give it a couple wipes with the this right here because Doing an oil change is inevitable that some oil is gonna, you know, spill here and there, but this is actually not very bad at all. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and twist this on. And you only have to hand tighten these. You do not have to use a machine to torque these down. And this, actually these frames, they give you this grip on here so you can have enough grip to uh, tighten it by hand, and there you go. And then you can also remove it by hand sometimes but you do want to give it enough tightness so that it's enough torque, I guess, not tightness, torque so that it doesn't just, you know, shake loose when you're driving down the road, but it doesn't have to be super duper duper tight. Because the problem is if you get these too tight, this is really just an aluminum like tin thing with like, you know, filter medium inside of it. If you get them too tight, then they get stuck on, they are a bitch to get off. Sometimes you can put a screwdriver through them and then turn them that way. But the, what happens is that when you try to turn them, the walls collapse and it just becomes a nightmare to get off. So just for, you know, uh, the sake of your future self, don't over tighten your oil filter, but tighten it if you get what I'm saying. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> So we are done with the bottom for the most part. The, I, spent, I swear I just spent more time trying to put the uh, skid plate back on because some of the screws that the skid plate uh, utilizes to hold itself into place. Uh, the threads are pretty much done. So I'm gonna have to go to the shop and get some uh, replacement skid plate uh, screws. But other than that, everything went pretty straightforward. So now I'm about to fill it back up with 6.1-ish quarts of oil. And then we're gonna see where we're going. We're gonna check it and make sure that we have enough oil. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. So let's go fill it up. All right, we're gonna check the oil level real quick and see where we are. Anyway, we're gonna grab our good old dipstick. It's back there. Oh, yeah, it's like we're good to go. There's your low level and there's your high level right there as you can see and we're gonna plug this thing on in and remove and uh it looks like we could use just about a little bit more as you can see that it's about half a quart more and we'll be good but we're i mean this is acceptable but half a quart more would be great so we're gonna go ahead and pour that in and then we will be done with this job. And then the only thing left to do will be to reset the maintain maintenance interval light. Um, should this be the end of the vlog? Okay, so this is gonna be the end of this vlog because we're running late for our meeting now. We are KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y, like, subscribe, comment, all that cool stuff. This is one of the many different maintenance things we're going to be doing on our loved GX470. I was gonna check all the fluids and filters today, but they kind of got away from us, and uh, yeah, stuff happens. So, till next time, friends, KRT Life, we are out of here. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching all of our GX content. Peace. All right, brothers and sisters, one last thing that I want to show y'all before we end this vlog. I know I already said I ended the vlog, but it's not quite ended because I'm going to show y'all how to reset your maintenance light that pops up right here in the corner of your dash right yonder when I turn the car on. I'll show y'all real quick what it looks like. Maintenance required light. That thing goes off in um, 5,000 mile intervals. So when you do your oil, you can go ahead and reset that light and I'm about to show y'all how to do it. So I put my car to the off position right now. What I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to hold this um, the odometer button down and I'm going to turn it to the on position. Let's see, so I'm holding that down. I'm gonna go to the on position, but I'm not gonna crank the car. Is that, on? Is that on? Okay, that's on. And I'm gonna wait until this thing starts flashing, which it just did. It started flashing, and I'm gonna release it. So, now when I crank the car up, the maintenance required light should stay off. Ah, voila, magnifique. Maintenance required light is off, and this vlog is officially done, and I am so tired, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Not from changing the oil. The changing the oil was really, really quick. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of stuff going on today, meetings and stuff like that. And one last thing, I got some replacement screws for our and washers for our um, God, what is the thing? The skid plate, the skid plate, the really cool skid plate that's under the GXs. And uh, tomorrow at some point, I'm gonna put these in. I'm probably not gonna vault that because I mean I'm just putting in two screws. But um, yeah, the skid plate is the only. Actually, I spent more time messing with that stupid skid plate and doing the whole change. And um, yeah, so. It's a very easy job. Anybody can do it in your parking deck. You probably don't even need to lift the truck up, to be honest, if you just feel like squeezing up under there. We are Carity Life. Carity Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all that cool stuff. And before I say a final uh, goodbye, I want to say, what are those little vents on the front of that skid plate about? Can somebody tell me? Because I thought they had some kind of function before I pulled the skid plate off, and I didn't see anything that they were actually cooling or forcing air towards. So let us know in the comment what those things are about. Now we are officially done with this vlog, and we will see y'all in the next vlog doing some cool GX stuff. Peace.